see you. What's happening? Anybody in church today? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> this is the service where the tryptophan is worn off, the turkey has been digested. We're gonna have some. We're gonna get excited today at church, right? A little bit. Yeah. Same with those watching online. Come on, let's re-welcome everybody who's watching online. Thank you so much for joining us today. Don't forget to log in and uh, chat it up with us on our online community. But remember this, a church alive, worth a drive. We want to see you out here next week, every week for December. We've got a lot of good things coming. Christmas Sunday is going to be sick. Uh, Pastor Todd, thanks for that awesome introduction. What a guy. Love this guy. Uh, always an honor to uh, be able to share the pulpit with such amazing uh, lead pastors. Come on, let's give it up for our lead pastors, Pastors Todd and Mary, um, who are doing... Leading an incredible work here. Man, Long Island, get ready. I love that part. Long Island, get ready. Can you imagine me? We've seen us on TV. All across the world, somebody in Australia is going to be like, oh, look at them. They're from Long Island. That's cool. Where's Long Island? So that's going to be awesome. Very excited about what is going to happen at Church Unleashed. So I want to get a little interactive today to start off today's sermon. Um, online audience, you can participate as well. Throw some things in the chat. But real quick, if you're here, I want you to shout out something that you can catch. Feelings. I like that. Fish. Fish. Cheater. What else we got? A ball, right? What else can you catch? A cold. Nice. Come on, anything else? Money. You can, oh, somebody. I'll catch some money right now. Come <laughs> on, you can catch. Come on, there's things you can catch. You can catch a train. You can catch a bus. You can catch a criminal. Um, you can catch um, the flu. Terrible. Fe right? Feelings. So these are all, all right, good job, good job. Give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs> Wonderful job in class today. Um, you can catch all these different things. I want to discuss three things and then move into something a little more spiritual um, as we, we are in church. Um, first thing you can catch is a cold. Anybody ever catch a cold before? Raise your hand if you've caught a cold. It's from Satan. And... Um, <laughs> So you catch a cold, you get the sniffles, you're kind of doing this, <laughs> and you, get, you catch a cold. How do you catch a cold? Germs! You catch a cold from being around people. Physical contact with people. Sometimes germs get airborne, and you're breathing them in. Everybody breathe right now. <laughs> oh, man, you might have just caught a cold. Why'd you even? Don't listen. That's right, essential oil. So you, you, you can build up... You, you, can catch, you can catch a cold. You've you got to be around people, though. You've got to come in contact with somebody who has a cold. It's because colds are what? Contagious. So you're around somebody who has a cold. You have a higher probability of catching that cold. What else can you catch? Any baseball fans in the house? Yes. So I, um, I've been playing baseball my whole life. Baseball is my first love when it comes to sports. Um, now, because I'm old, you play softball. That's just what happens. Um, <laughs> So I love playing softball with the men, Church Unleashed. We, have a, we do have a men's league because that's just the league that's there. I apologize to all the non-men. Um, but we have, that's what we have. I love playing it. Uh, see Carlos if you're interested. We start in March. Anyways, I love playing ball. Um, now, you can catch a foul ball. Anybody ever been to home of the 2020 World Series champion, Matt City Field? So if you go to City Field and you buy a ticket, you could sit in the, in the stands and you can catch a foul ball. But the the chances of you catching a foul ball at that one game you go to every like three years, probably not that high, right? Now, how do you catch more baseballs or softballs? You, you get involved, man. You get a jersey on, you play for the team. Now, not everybody, you can't just walk on to the Mets or the Yankees or one of these teams. But when you're in the game, you're going to catch more baseballs. So when you get the jersey on, when you get into it, there's a much better chance, a much higher probability of you catching the baseball. You're going to field it. Third thing, this is something I know a lot about, fishing. So I've never been fishing. <laughs> Play fish, right? Um, I've never been fishing. I don't know anything about fishing, okay? So if you take me out there, we're going to die. But <laughs> fishing, one thing I do know is you got to be in the right position to fish. What do I mean by that? You can fish all day, all night, all week, all year in, an, in a place where there are no fish and you're not going to catch any fish. Whether you're casting a rod, you're dropping a net thing, and you're going to 
You could try all you want, but you're not going to catch anything because you're in the wrong position. You're in the wrong spot. So you got to be around people. You got to be in the right position. And you got to be on the team. Now, before we get going anymore, since you've been a great class today, turn to the person next to you and tell them the title of today's message. It's called Flock University. Go ahead. Say Flock University. Now turn to the person on the other side of you and say, man, I'm just glad he didn't call it Flock You. <laughs> oh, man. You ever go to a university, LIU? You know, that's all it is, guys. That's all it is. Don't send your hate emails to Todd at my church only. So a few minutes. I want to talk to you a few minutes today about catching vision and then carrying a vision for your life. How many people want a vision for their life? How many people have a vision for their life, right? How many people have God's vision for your life? What we want to do today is we want to catch God's vision for our lives, and we want to run with that. We don't want to just catch it and then drop it. We don't want to just catch it and give it to somebody else. We want to catch it. We want to run with it. We want to carry that vision unto completion. That's what we want to do. So I could talk today from the Bible about a guy named Paul, formerly known as Saul, and uh, because I find it very interesting how he was someone who God took away his eyesight in order to give him a fresh vision. It's interesting. Could talk about Paul. I could talk about Jesus himself because he's like the, the OG, you know, vision guy, right? He came to earth and he set the, he set the pace. He was the, he was the pace car for vision. So he set the tone. He clearly had a clear vision. He carried that all the way to salvation, man, all the way to the cross, all the way to uh, the tomb, all the way through the tomb, all the way back up to heaven, right? He, he carried it through. He's the best that there is. But I want to focus on the group of people that were around Jesus the most. The group that, that caught the vision from Jesus himself and then carried it to the rest of the world. I will talk about the disciples. Twelve disciples. So how did they catch Jesus' vision? They were around him. They caught the Jesus germs. Right? G they had that physical contact with Jesus. The, the, everything Jesus did was, was there, was airborne. It was the, they were in contact with him. They saw it happening. They were in the same room. They were around him. The germs of Jesus were spreading to these disciples. It was impossible for them not to catch what Jesus was doing because they were so close to him, right? Our desire is to be as close to Jesus as we could possibly be because the closer we are to Jesus, the more we're going to catch from him. They also, though, they got in the game. They didn't just buy a ticket to the Jesus game and sit in the stands and oh man, got my glove today though I'm prepared I hope that a ball comes my way because I'm ready to catch it what they did is they put in the jersey they got in ready position and they were ready to field whatever came their way and they caught a lot more baseballs because they put the jersey on and got in the game they, they preached to people they healed people they prayed for people, they defended people they helped people they fed people. The disciples did a lot of different things. They couldn't have done those things if they were just watching. They got in the game. They used their gloves. And then the disciples also put themselves in the best position. I'm not even going to pick it up anymore because I'm scared. Um, they put themselves in the best position to be used by Jesus. They put themselves in the best position. How did they do that? And they studied. They practiced. They listened to him. They watched what he was doing. They failed sometimes. They learned from that. They tried again. And they went without knowing all the answers. How many people love that part about everything about life? Sometimes you know there's something you need to start. Well, I'm talking to somebody today. There's something you need to start. But you want to know, come on, if you're like me, God, if I just have steps 1 through 10, and if there's 12 steps, give me all of those, and then if there's 15, I need the rest of them. If you just give me all of that, <laughs> then I'll start. It doesn't work like that sometimes. We just start. We just go. How will your life be defined? Will your life be defined? It'll, it will be defined by how close you are to Jesus. It'll, it'll be defined by if you've gotten yourself in the game, and it'll be defined by the positions that you've put yourself in. I'm a big proponent of the power of your position in life. You could position yourself for the blessings that God has for you, or you could position yourself right out of the way of all of them. But it's all about our position. The disciples listened to Jesus' voice. I hear the voice, right? 
Last week we heard an awesome sermon from Pastor Taco. I hear the sound. I hear the voice. When you hear the voice, you catch the vision. The disciples were close enough to Jesus and frequently, every single day, to where they heard his voice and they caught his vision. Last week here, we heard the voice. We were praying for people during the message, powerful, during worship, powerful, like it is every week here. But we heard the voice. Now this week we catch the vision. So how, how do we, so now, anybody a human being? Just raise your online, please, if you're, just type it in there. If you're a human being, we see things, right? Hopefully, thankfully, if you have, you know, some. But we see things. How do we see? According to WebMD, it's all about light. So if light reflects off an object that's in our field of vision, it enters our eyes. I happen to believe that we let too many things enter our eyes that shouldn't even be in our field of vision. We need to guard the things that are in our field of vision, right? There's, sometimes we just allow certain things, and I'm not even just talking about stuff that you watch on TV. I'm not talking about anything. I'm talking about sometimes the, the people that you watch and that you try to emulate. I'm talking about the, 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 uh, the conversations that you have that you're watching. I'm not gossiping. I'm just listening. You know, gossiping works. Side note. <laughs> one person has to talk and the other one has to. So anyways, but we let... Now, here's why it's important, because what we learn from how we see is that whatever's in that field of vision, as soon as there's a reflection on it, it enters. I thought that was interesting. It enters into our eyes. The eyes are like the gateway to in, into our body. So it's very important. It, it's, it's, like, it's like anything else. How do, you, how do you abstain from something you need to abstain from? Don't even tempt yourself to begin with. Don't, don't walk into the, the bar if you can't not drink. Right? Don't, don't be around people who are doing drugs if you've had addiction. It's don't, don't go back to the, the person who just ripped your heart out and left you at the altar because you feel like there's nobody else. So, in other words, the things that, how, how, do, we, how do we make sure the stuff doesn't get into our, into our eyes, enter through, into our bodies, through our eyes? Don't have it in your field of vision. If it's not in God's word, it's not for me. In fact... I feel like we need to shine so brightly that we expand other people's field of vision and we reflect Jesus so, so greatly, so brightly, so, so intently that other people can't help but see Jesus now in their field of vision. That's our goal, right? That's what we want to do. So I want to propose to you today, I'm just kidding, I want to propose to you today <laughs> that our eyes play a huge part in our lives. Right? They, they're the window. They're the gateway. It all begins with our eyes. So what we see determines so much. What we see determines our focus. What we see determines our goals. What we see determines our decisions. What we see determines our spending habits, how we spend our time. What we see determines our friends. If we stay at a church, if we serve at a church, if we give to or through a church, how we feel, what we think, what vacations we go on, whether we boo or cheer a team. It's all about what we see determines our next action, right? For instance, if you're online and you're looking up vacations and you see a place, especially right now for us, where everybody is just bundled up and it's a rinky-dink location and you've got to sleep outside sometimes because the heat doesn't work, or then you go to the next website and you see... Um, you know, like Bermuda or Aruba or somewhere, and you have these nice beaches, and the water's calm, and someone's eating dinner with the no shoes on in the sand, and you're just like, Lord, I'm seeing it right here. Send it. Send me what I'm seeing. I will be a missionary to Aruba. You know, like one of those types of things. <laughs> but you saw it, and then it entered in. All of a sudden, you're like, all right, you know what? Actually, how can I save enough money to get there? How long is it going to take me? What, what are my action steps? What, what do I do to... So all that being said, human beings tend to believe what we see. We gravitate toward what we see. We engage and react with what we see. So if what we see, if our vision is that important, if it determines all that, then I better be getting behind the right vision. I better know the perfect vision for my life, but not just for my life, for my church. God's vision, what Jesus has 
put in front of that's why studying the disciples is so cool because they were around the vision they were around the guy the one who came to literally change us right and and, and to change humanity and change the world his his goal is to change the world our goal is to change long island but we can learn a lot from this uh, portion or these portions of scripture because what we see determines where we wind up when you see aruba and you set goals to get there, you will wind up in Aruba. If you see, I'll never be able to go on vacation ever again. If you see, man, I'll never be able to get that degree. If you see, man, I'll always be overweight, never fit into what's in my closet. If you see all those different things, right? Man, I'll never be a good enough husband. I'll never be a good enough dad. I'll never be a good enough mom. I'll never be a good enough wife. I'll never be a good enough girlfriend. No one's ever going to date me. I'm never going to graduate from high school. If that's what you see, that's where you're going to wind up. Because what we see, what's in our field of vision, enters and becomes part of who we are. So let's, let, let, let's make a deal. Can we, can we encourage each other to catch God's vision for our lives today? Can we do that? Here's what I know. To catch the vision, you have to know the vision. Jesus had a clear vision to seek and save the lost. That was Jesus' vision. To seek and save those who are lost. It was that simple. Sometimes we overcomplicate things. Any overcomplicators in here? I have a tendency to overcome. See, I, I, have, I have a tendency to, uh, to uh, like, analysis, paralysis by analysis type of thing. You know, like, instead of just, like I said, instead of just like, all right, I'm just going to go, I need to know, okay, if I go this way, though, there's three possible outcomes. And then if I do this, there's a couple more out. But, oh, man, I don't know which one's the best one. What's the best one? What should I do? I don't know. What should I, maybe, you know what? I'll just do nothing. I'll wait for the next opportunity. You know, like, <laughs> Because I, sometimes I would rather not try something and fail. I gotta get, it's one of those things I work through, right? You try to get over the, let me try, let's just try some. Just try some, just try some. So I'm in the boat, I'm, I'm there. I'm preaching to me at the same time. Sometimes we need to just go. But it, sometimes we overcomplicate stuff. Jesus didn't overcomplicate anything. He literally had one mission. Now, not everybody liked that mission. Some people wish he would have stopped and had 13 dinners with him and then hung out for three weeks and then did all this stuff. But he said, nah, I have to go and there's more people over here that need me. There's more people over here that need me. There's more people over here that need to be saved. There's more people over here that are going to hell if I don't come. And so he knew what his mission was. And it was that simple. See, the vision's got to be easy to understand so we can follow it. It's got to be simple. That's what Jesus modeled for us. But here's the thing. Just because a vision is easy to, to understand and read and, 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 and follow doesn't necessarily mean the journey's going to be easy. Anybody ever been alive? Just by a show of hands, are those watching? Um, if you've been alive for any part of, uh, you know, portion of time, um, you know that challenges arise. Just raise your hand if you've never had a problem. Okay, okay. So we're all, we're all on the same team. We're all in the same boat. We're all, we all have the same jersey on. Life is hard, right? Why should we make what we're striving for that much harder? It should be clear and it should be simple. Seeking and saving those who are lost. That was Jesus' mission. He, he portrayed how to fulfill that vision to the disciples in many times and many ways. Many times, many ways. Come on, somebody was thinking that. Who was thinking that? Merry Christmas. All right. Matthew 5. Great book of the Bible. It's got a great name. Let your light... Let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Easy roadmap. What's the actionable step? Shine bright. Let your light shine. Someone just saying Rihanna, no? <laughs> it's church people. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. But there's that light, right? We're talking about vision. What's in your field of vision? What, what enters in? Stuff that's reflected by light. So Jesus knew that people would see what's reflected on. How, do we re how, how, how does something get? We need the light. Where's the light come? It's got to come from us. It's got to come from, from Jesus within us. So we need to shine so brightly that we reflect Jesus. We need to, we need to shine so brightly that, that, we, that we illuminate Jesus in people's field of vision. 
Good works. Good works, right? We got to do good things for people. Flip Long Island a bird. 857 turkeys. Eight fifty seven. That's us doing good works. That's us shining brightly for people to see. Almost a thousand turkeys. Next year we're hitting over a thousand, by the way. Just start preparing. Um, but that's probably if you maybe you got families of four, whatever it is. That's quick math. Thirty-two, thirty-four hundred people possibly that were impacted by what we did. Think about it. Think about it. You think eight hundred fifty-seven turkeys, man? That's pretty cool. It's eight hundred fifty-seven. That's over 3,000 people probably, maybe even more. Sometimes Thanksgiving dinner, you could 10 people, 12 people, 14 people, 15 people. How many people can we fit in here? You know, it's like, it's like a clown car, you know, where everybody gets out. That's Thanksgiving, basically. Whoever can come. There's going to be 5,000. We just fed the 5,000. It's biblical. But it's, it was it's because we had a, a simple vision. We knew what we needed to do. We wanted to shine bright. We wanted to let people see the good works. Mark 12 says this, and you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul. Everybody say all. All your mind, all your strength. And the second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. No other commandment is greater than these. Another really simple action step for us. Love God, love people. So what do we have? Love God, love people, shine bright. Love God, love people, shine bright. Come on, say it with me. Love God, love people, shine bright. It's that easy. Love God, love people, shine bright. Simple vision, simple action. See, at Church Unleashed, we have a, a simple vision in this house too. To plunder hell and populate heaven. That's what we exist to do. That, that's the essence of everything we do at Church Unleashed. Why do we use props? Because maybe that'll connect with somebody on a different level, plunder hell, populate heaven. Why do, why do we have a really cool screen? Because maybe that'll connect with somebody on a different level, plunder hell, populate heaven. Why, why, do, we, why do we have a parking team to greet you as soon as you come in? Because maybe that'll, that'll kind of connect with somebody who's coming to church for the first time, want to plunder hell and populate heaven. Why, why, why do we do ev- Because we want to plunder hell and want to populate heaven. It's very easy. In so doing, we can change the culture of Long Island. In so doing, we can unleash people's full redemptive potential. What is that? What God has taken you from in your past, what he's bringing you through currently, and then ultimately what he's bringing you to, the vision for your life. What you see is where you end up. I want to see what God sees. I don't want to, I don't want to look back and see what I was. I want to look forward and see what God sees for me, right? That's what I want to see. It's where I want to go. That's where we all need to get to. It's that simple. We got to give people Jesus. That's what it comes down to. At the end of every service, we give people a, an opportunity to pray, receive Jesus. Why? Because that's what it's all about. There's no other point. It's not, they're not receiving Matt. Hey, raise your hand if you want to learn more about Matt. No one cares about Matt. Well, we care. <laughs> but Jesus, Jesus is what it's all about. You, you want to know why? He's the only one that can change you from the inside out. I can't. I can help you out, give you some steps, do this, do that. Hey, maybe try this, try that. But Jesus is going to change you from the inside out. He's the only one that can change your, your eternal zip code from 66-whatever six, six to 7-7-Jesus, to seven, seven right? Like that's, he's going to change your eternal zip code. Plundering hell and populating heaven. So what's the action step? It's very simple. Right here, right now, Sundays, this is what we do. Bring people to church. Simple action step bring people to church. We put all our energy and effort into Sundays. Why? Because it's our biggest opportunity to influence the most people for Jesus, to plunder the most people from hell and to populate the most people in heaven. That is what we want to do at Church Unleashed. So if you're watching online and you can get here, you can bring someone with you, come here next Sunday. In fact, this is going to be crazy. Stop your recording and get here for the 12:15. So Now, if you're here at Church Unleashed and you're in the game, you got a jersey on, you know, you, you got one of the shirts on, you got a headset, you're doing something, you're outside, you got, you're, doing, you're in the game. You're paving the way for people to come to know Jesus. You are helping to accomplish the vision. You have the jersey on, you're moving us forward. Come on, let's give it up for the people who move us forward at Church Unleashed. Thank you guys for doing what you're doing.
whether you're serving today or maybe finally getting an off day. But that's what we do. We plunder hell, populate heaven. The other thing that I know is that you don't have to be the vision creator to be a vision carrier. You don't have to be the vision creator to be a vision carrier. The disciples clearly were not the vision creators. They didn't come up with everything, right? They, they, didn't, they didn't come up with the whole deal like, you know, God, let's have a consultation. I think the way you sent Jesus was incorrect. I think we need to go about doing it this way. They didn't create anything, but they learned how to carry it. So as far as we're concerned at Church Unleashed, we're not the vision creators. And all type, type A people in the room are like, ah, man, I like to create my own vision and go. At Church Unleashed, God gave that mantle to pastors Todd and Mary. That's what he did. He gave them a vision on how to reach Long Island. That, can I just be honest? Can I give you some insider information? That's a big responsibility. That's a big deal. Imagine being the two people that God said, hey man, I want you to plant this church, I want you to do this, and you need this kind of people, and you're going to go about it this way, you're going to do this, and there's thousands of people that are going to be watching you, and you're going to influence all these kind of... That's a big deal! So they're the vision creators for the church. I mean, obviously, ultimately, God is, but through them. But here's where we come in. We get to be the vision carriers, because we don't have to be vision creators to be vision carriers. So... We're going to go into how we do that a little bit, but being a vision carrier is an honor. It's a cool. Do you think the disciples felt honored that they were Jesus' vision carrier? It's a cool thing to be able to take something and run with it and see it come to fruition, right? I mean, the pastors and the staff here at Church Unleashed, we're all in vision carriers. We're all about what God is doing here at Church Unleashed, what he's doing all over the place, what people who are watching all over the world right now. You know, people are watching all over the world right now. Hundreds, which is cool. So thank you for joining in. But we're all in on that. So like the disciples, we're willing to do whatever it takes to make this happen. But in order to carry a vision, you have to be commissioned. And then once you're commissioned, you have to, C word, commit. A couple people squirming right now, a little bit. Long Islanders love committing. So here's the deal. We got busy. We got busy, right? We got busy. Life is busy. I now have a 10-week-old son at home who's amazing and, and chunky. He's, um, he's currently eating steak and uh, potatoes. He weighs 33 pounds. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Love you. Um, so life gets busy, right? I get that. You have no sleep. Life is this, blah, 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 blah. I get all those kinds of things. But once you're commissioned by Jesus to do things, the disciples, they had a choice. They could say, you know what, man? God has commissioned me to do this. All I have to do is commit. I got to make one decision. I'm going all in or I'm going all out. We have a decision. And that decision becomes our vision. That vision becomes action steps. That vision becomes where we wind up in life. So check this out. Matthew 28, this is the great commission in the Bible. It says, therefore go and make disciples of all the nations. Notice there real quick in the first line, it doesn't give you exactly where you're going. It doesn't give you um, the, the town, the zip code. It doesn't give you how. It doesn't give you the name of the people you're going to speak to. It doesn't give you the, the way you're going to do it, the words you're going to say when you get there. All it says is go and make disciples of all the nations. So what's our nation? Our nation is Long Island. That's our nation. That's who we want to reach. We want to change the culture. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Do we do that at Church Unleashed? We do, right? How many people have been baptized at Church Unleashed? Woo! Come on, let's give it up for those who have been baptized at Church Unleashed. For those who haven't, who are yet to be baptized, sign up for our next one. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I've given you. Growth track, life groups, um, Financial Peace University, Crank Up Your Marriage Conference, counselings that we do, one-on-one -on -one meetings with different people, premarital sessions. Come on, we're all about setting you up for marriage, not just setting you up for a wedding day. Church Unleashed. Um, volunteer meetings, captain meetings, things that we, we're teaching people. We're teaching people. But what's cool is, too, at the end, it says, and be sure of this, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age, right? So what does that mean? When life gets hard, remember, if you were a human and you raised your hand before, um, we know that life gets challenging. 
And when life gets challenging, I went, man, you know, I did commit to this, but man, it's kind of tough right now. This is kind of this, this is kind of, I'm with you always. You're going to be able to do this. You can do this because Philippians 4.13, that when God is with us, he gives us strength, right? He gives us strength. So how do you carry your vision? You got to protect it. You got to guard that sucker. You got to guard it, defend it, don't let anyone hijack it. Guard that vision. The Bible says it like this. I love the Bible sometimes because it just gets gangster. So it says, Matthew 7, the greatest book in the Bible, says, Beware of false prophets who come disguised as harmless sheep but are really vicious wolves. You can identify them by their fruit, that is, by the way they act. Anybody know anyone who acts a certain way? Can you pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? A good tree produces good fruit, and a bad tree produces bad fruit. A good tree can't produce bad fruit, and a bad tree can't produce good fruit. So every tree that does not produce good fruit is chopped down and thrown into the fire. Yes, just as you can identify a tree by its fruit, so you can identify people by their actions. I didn't say it. I'm just saying it's in there. Follow the fruit. Follow the fruit. I want to say it. Follow the fruit. I think there's good fruit here at Church Unleashed. I'm looking out at a sea of a lot of really good fruit. You guys are good fruit. You're good people are doing good things. That means we're a good tree. 857 turkeys. That's good fruit. Don't let anyone come in here and tell you how they could do it better. Come on, don't let anybody come in here and, 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 and tell, tell you how we should be doing everything that we're doing. Yeah, we take suggestions, we do all that, whatever, from certain people. But no matter how close people are to you, don't let them come in and hijack your vision. Don't let them come in and hijack the vision of the church. This is ours now. This is ours to guard. It'll go as far as we all decide that we want to take it. Can I make this personal for you for a second? Think about this. Just because someone has a label in your life doesn't make them an expert in every area of it. You know what we call that? Control. People love to control people. You should be doing this. You should be doing this this way. You shouldn't be doing this. You should be doing that. You should be controlling. And it could be anybody. It could be a friend, family worker, boss, coworker. Did I say family worker? It could be a friend, family, coworker, boss. What's it? Anyways, um, staff. It could, be, it could be even a spouse, right? So take, for instance, uh, Gina and me, right? My wife, for those who don't know me. We, um, we're married. And I believe what the Bible says, that when you get married and God ordains it, two become one, right? So no one could be any closer than we are with each other. I know her better than anybody knows her. She knows me better than anybody knows me. And we have our, each other's best intentions at heart. That's just how this thing works. That's how marriage works. So any, anything that, that I want to do, she supports, and vice versa, all that whole kind of thing. Now, we're not, we're not two lives that are just kind of living under the same roof. We're one life. I always say it's, it's our life. It's not our lives. It's our life because we're now one. But anyways, we have, we're, so moral story, you can't get closer than, we're, than we are. But that doesn't mean that I become an expert in every area of her life. Does that make sense? So that doesn't mean that in, in her, you know, all these, every single little moment, I have to be there to tell her how to do everything. So I'm not looking to control her. I'm looking to protect her. In the same way with the bride of Christ, right? The church. We're not here to control the church. We're here to protect the church. We're here to protect the vision of the church. And that's what we do as, as carriers of vision of the church. Does that make sense? Secondly, you've got to propel it. To so protect it, you propel it. You've got to move it forward. You've got to advance it. We go back to Matthew 28. It says, therefore, go. Therefore, go. The first word you see there is go. Therefore is technically a conjunction, so I'm just going to move that to the side. So the first word 
Remember, it's Flock University. So you see the word go. It's two letters, big meaning, a lot of power. We need to go. We talked about this a bit. You might not get every single detail, but our job is to take the step. Our job is to take the step. We need to propel the vision. If we just take the vision, the disciples just took it and they sat on it. They dug a hole and they buried it. We know where the vision is. We're just going to leave it there, though. It's a good vision. Our job is to propel the vision forward, to run with it, to go forward with it, not to go backward to the way things used to be. Figure out how church can be. Figure out how we can reach Long Island in a different way. That's our job, to go, to go, to go, to propel the vision forward. We protect it, we propel it, and we perpetuate it. What does that mean? We've got to keep it going. We can't let it die. We can't let the vision die. What do you do when you let your vision for your life die? You start to fizzle out. You have no reason to wake up in the morning. You get, you get tired real quick. You have no energy. You have no, you have no fight left in you. You give up quicker. Same thing is true with the church. We need people to keep this vision going. Because we'll, as we keep this thing going, you can clap for that. That's pretty good. pretty good deal. But how do, we, how do we do that? Matthew 28. We teach people. The more people that come in, remember, this all works together, guys. The more people that come in, the more people get taught. The more pre- people that get taught, the more people they reach. And now we're all over Long Island. And we're, we're like I said, and we're figuring this, and we're reaching different people in different areas that I can never reach, that you can never reach. And now we're reaching people. And now all of a sudden, the vision, the vision, it's coming, to, it's coming to pass. Because God placed this, God birthed this into the hearts of our pastors, who they have birthed it into our heart. And now God is breathing on it. Pastor Todd said it last week when I hear the sound, man, you could just feel that God is moving in this church on so many different levels. God is setting us up. We are here. We are in position for God to do a move in our lives. We're around people that want to see God do a move in their lives. We have people that are in the game paving the way for people to have God do a move in their lives. That's that's the vision. This is the vision. This is, is, is the move. And the more people that are involved in that, the longer the vision will last. Right? The longer your fuse, the longer you will last. Right? The more people that are here, the more spread that we have. And that brings us full circle. The more people who are plundered from hell who are catching the vision are the more people that are are changing the culture of Long Island by reaching their full redemptive potential. That's the people that are carrying the vision. And then the more effective we'll be at fulfilling Jesus' mission of seeking and saving lost people, of plundering hell and populating heaven. See how closely tied those two things are? So as we get behind God's vision for our lives, God's vision for life in general, God's vision for our church, we will see God change Long Island. My question to you is, have you caught the vision yet? Have you caught the vision of Jesus yet? Is he, is he the center of who you are? Has he changed you from the inside out? If you can't answer that question, we'll address that in a minute. But if you can answer it to the, to the good, to the, yeah, I've caught Jesus' vision. Let me ask you this question. Are you carrying it? Are you really, truly seeking people? Or, you know, if it happens. If it happens. We were, at, uh, we were at Buffalo Wild Wings yesterday. Thank you. Someone gave us that gift card. Praise the Lord. Um, we were there. We were there. And our waitress made it a point to bring up Jesus in our little session. She used our son, because we had him there, the little carrier, Oh, it's so cute. And how old is he? Oh, 10 weeks. Wow, he looks like 10 months. Um, but she said, at my church, went right into it. Wasn't ashamed of nothing. At my church, and we've been praying because there's been a period of like barrenness where people are praying to have kids. They couldn't have kids. All of a sudden, we're having a baby boom in my church. There's people pregnant all over the place. And I was like, actually, it's kind of funny. We've had some of that happen in our church, man, it was one Sunday, a month, two months ago, whatever, where like three different people told us they were pregnant. And like we were going back and forth having this conversation. Oh, church, what church, 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 cool. But she was trying to, she was trying to bring up church. It was intentional. She was living out the vision. She was carrying it. 
She wasn't just saying, you know what, if they bring up church, I'm going to talk to them about it. I'm ready. The vision's here in a hole in the ground. I'm ready with it. See how it works? She made a point. So, again, my question is, are you making it a point to carry the vision of Jesus? Are you making it a point to carry the vision of Church Unleashed? Because as we make that our point, this goes from, man, this church is great for me, to this church is great because we are influencing so many people and changing the culture of Long Island. That's how we know that we are catching, and not just catching, carrying the vision that God has for this house to Long Island. So where do you stand today? Have you even caught yet? Are you in the process of catching or are you carrying? That's the question we got to ask ourselves. And for you watching online, it's the same thing. Have you caught it yet? And are you carrying the vision that Jesus has for your life? Come on, let's pray today.